Allie, a pastor, called by God to share God's love and welcome in the world to the church in Roslyn. I give thanks for you for the ministry we have shared over the past nine years and for the ways that you have showed me the kingdom of God in our midst. I decided that for my last three sermons here at Arlington Temple, I wanted to write you all some letters. In Paul's time, letters would have been read aloud to the gathered community. Uh, of course, he wouldn't have been the one doing it, but I thought that it was appropriate to do it now that way as well. And I decided that one of the things that I wanted to talk about was called mine, yours, what we have discerned those calls to be and how they might be changing. Some of you might remember, if only vaguely, that on my first Sunday here at Arlington Temple nine years ago, I started off by telling you my call story. I didn't read from Paul that day, but instead I read from the book of Ruth. And I set my own story alongside the story of Ruth, the Moabite, who followed her Judahite mother-in-law, Naomi, to a foreign land, not because God showed up to her in a dream or a burning bush, but simply because Ruth loved her. I told you about how I experienced my own call to ministry through relationships. It started with the relationships that I experienced at the small church where I grew up, but came to fruition in college as I met all kinds of people whose backgrounds and stories were very different from my own. They were people whose houses I helped paint during spring break mission trips and farmers with whom I planted olive trees during a campus ministry trip to Bethlehem. They were refugees who I tutored in English on William and Mary's campus. They were the disabled adults with whom I spent time at my church's respite care ministry. And each of these people, each of these groups of people, unlocked a little bit of what the kingdom of God looked like for me. And I knew somehow that I was called to live as part of that kingdom and to invite others to live as part of it as well. I did not at first think that that would mean ministry as the pastor of a church. And again, I've told this before, but to be honest, I wanted to do something edgier than that. I wanted to do something working with people at the margins of society and serving them and welcoming them and advocating for them. I could just never figure out what it was exactly that I wanted to do. It wasn't until my mandatory church internship during my second year of seminary that I said, hey, I think this is it. I think this is what combines my gifts and passions in all the right ways. I got to study and teach. I, I got to be a chaplain to the women in the women's shelter in my church's basement. I got to serve communion to people in line for the soup kitchen that ran out of that same basement on Sundays. The church, I realized, was the best place to carry out Jesus' own mission of good news to the poor. And so I became a pastor. And I had what became this neatly packaged and over time well-rehearsed call story to tell people when they asked. There was also more to this story. And it was part that I usually mentioned, but often kind of glossed over. During college, while I was working out what it meant to live as part of the kingdom of God, I was also falling in love with the Bible for the first time. And more specifically, I fell in love with the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament. I had always kind of thought that that was the boring part. But then I took a class from a teacher who made it come alive for me. 
And suddenly all of these stories that I had grown up hearing in Sunday school were part of a bigger story of God's people. And what's more, I found out that there was so much I had been missing in these stories without knowing more about the cultural context in which they emerged. And what's more, I discovered that sometimes these stories even seemed to talk to each other with their different perspectives on the politics and issues of the times. And so when I did go to seminary, even as I fulfilled my call of good news to the poor, praying with homeless women in a church basement, I also took as many Hebrew Bible classes as I could. And I thought someday I'd like to go back to school and get a PhD in this. I wanted that, but I didn't feel God calling me to it. I knew that in this season, God was calling me to ministry, was calling me to a good news to the poor, that God was calling me to the church. And so I set that aside for maybe someday. And today I wanna to tell you how the rest of that story has continued to unfold for me. The thing about maybe someday is that it's really, really easy for that to become never. After my first three years as an associate pastor at Williamsburg UMC, I happened to read about this church in Arlington whose pastor was about to become a district superintendent. And I thought, I know that church. And that's exactly the kind of church where I would love to be a pastor. In the UMC, you don't just get to decide these things for yourself. You don't just apply. But I did talk to my own DS, and I kind of put my hat in the ring. And the powers that be decided that that was a good enough idea, and they decided to move me here. And I was excited. And in the back of my mind, I thought, well, I don't know what that means for going back to school. But this feels right for now, and so we'll see. And then what happened is, I loved that church. And sure, there were times when I felt overwhelmed or discouraged. And there were times when I about had it up to here with the church as an institution. But I have always loved this church and its people. And as the years went by, five, six, seven, I thought, well, the ship has probably sailed on going back to school at this point. I didn't think I would even have any professors who would remember me anymore. Now, luckily, I still got to read, and I still got to study, and I still got to teach. And for those of you who have been in Sunday Bible study with me, especially, I think and I hope you've gotten to see how I have tried to give you the same gift that I got in college. To help you fall in love with the Bible by learning to see it and read it in new ways. We've talked about parts of the Old Testament that no one really reads and about the historical background and about the ways the texts bring their different perspectives and create a conversation. That has been one of my greatest joys here. And for a while, it seemed like that would continue to be how I lived out this aspect of my call. In January of 2019, something changed. And it started when I got a fairly unremarkable email from Wesley Theological Seminary advertising some of its Doctor of Ministry programs. The demon is a, a terminal doctorate level professional degree that a lot of pastors get, usually in areas like church leadership and pastoral care. And I was tempted by one of those programs and I also realized that if I decided to go in that direction, then I was really saying goodbye to this idea of a PhD in Hebrew Bible for good. And so I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I'll just take a class. 
I'll take a class in Hebrew Bible and I'll, I'll see how it goes. I'll, I'll see if I still love it. I'll see if I still have got it. Let's just knock on this door and see if it cracks open. I lived for that class for that semester, that spring of 2019. I was about 75 years pregnant with Lydia at the time. My father was dying. I was trying to prepare for maternity leave here at church. I was terribly burnt out. And Tuesday afternoons in this class on Exodus at Wesley Theological Seminary were quite honestly what kept me going. And I came out of it saying, yes, I want to keep doing this. Now, I still wrestled with discernment a lot at that time. Did God want me to go back to school? Or was that just what Allie wanted? Was I following a call? Or was this just a personal dream of self-fulfillment? And what about the work that there was still to do here at Arlington Temple, especially on the front of the building project? These are the questions that I asked myself and asked God and talked about and journaled about over and over. But I thought, well, I don't know. But I guess I'll just keep knocking on doors and seeing what opens. And so I kept taking classes, this time through Fuller Theological Seminary online. And I spent every evening and every day off on homework. This has been the case for the past couple of years. And I kept loving it. And eventually I said to John, who knew that I had been talking about this for a very long time, I want to go for it. And he said, okay, go for it. And so over the next year and a half, I worked on getting everything in order to actually apply for PhD programs in Hebrew Bible. Prerequisites, letters of recommendation, writing samples, GREs. And as you now know, eventually that door at Princeton Theological Seminary opened for me as well. Is it God who opened those doors? I don't know. I know sometimes privilege opens a lot of doors too. What I know is that this is a love and a desire that hasn't gone away. And that now I am walking toward it and choosing to trust that this is good in God's eyes. I wanted to tell you this story today for a couple of reasons. One is that there's probably a part of me that felt like I owed it to you to give you a reason for why I'm leaving. One person said to me after I made that initial announcement, I know that this has been your dream and I'm only sorry that you have been delayed for so long in following it. And I thought, well, no, that's not exactly right. I don't want anyone to think that I haven't wanted to be in ministry here at Arlington Temple or that I was just kind of biding my time until the next thing came along. I love this church. You all have been my church family and I am proud of the things that we've been able to do together and I am hopeful for the future of this congregation. I truly believe that God called me to Arlington Temple and that God has continued to call me to Arlington Temple over these past nine years. But the thing about call is that it's not always as static as I think we sometimes imagine. We talk sometimes like God calls us to one specific thing and we just have to figure out what that thing is and then do it for the rest of our lives. But really, I think God calls us to different tasks and different places over the course of our lives. And it's this ongoing dynamic process of continuing to listen to God and talk to God and discern where God is leading us at any given point. 
We hear a little of this in Paul's own call story as he tells it in his letter to the Galatians. He travels to one place and then another, and his mission is always to tell people about Jesus. And yet he still has to go back and rework out with others just what his job is supposed to be. And so I also hope that as I tell this story, you perhaps hear something that resonates with you and that this can be a chance for you to revisit your own call stories and to think about God's call on your life in a more dynamic kind of way. The conclusion that Paul and the leadership of the Jerusalem church come to is that Paul is welcome to continue his mission to the Gentiles. And all the leadership asks of him is that he remember the poor, probably the poor of the church in Jerusalem. I think now about this very clear call that I experienced as a young adult, this call to service and relationship and advocacy for the poor and, to, and for people on the margins. And I think that, am I really going to go spend five years sitting in a library in this town full of beautifully landscaped yards? Can I be true to that original call, even as I respond to this newer one? And the truth is, of course, that there is brokenness even in places with well-manicured lawns. And that poverty usually exists deceptively close to wealth. Because usually wealth depends on poverty to exist. And so I go, resolved to keep my eyes open, to get out of the library every once in a while and remember the poor, which, as Paul writes, has always been what I've been eager to do. What's the end goal of all of this? Will this path lead me ultimately into the academy or back to the church or someplace that kind of bridges the two? I honestly don't know. I'm just knocking and seeing what opens. What about you? Have you been listening lately? For God's call? I know that there are a couple of others of you here who are on the brink of some big new things. How would you tell your own call story? It doesn't have to be finished yet. You don't have to be able to tie it up with a nice big bow. But how has God brought you to where you are here now? And what's next? What about Arlington Temple as a community? You all are on the brink of some pretty big changes too. How would you tell the story of where God has brought this church and where God is leading you all next? You may still be in the middle of the story. That's okay. We all are. And God is with us in it. So may you listen, may you dream, may you knock on some doors and see what opens, and may the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all and in it all. Amen. <laughs>